It's only game. Why you have to be mad? But the big news today, the big news today is the Polaris reveal. Polaris is the new hero coming to Hero Wars Dominion era, Facebook and web. She is an ice based, I believe, I believe a control mage, but I don't really know for sure. And just looking at her out of the gate, she shares a lot of similarities with uh, with Iris, and I'm willing to bet, now that I'm looking at this, I bet that they used her, her character model. The way that the hair kind of curves around, I bet that they used her, her character model. Now, the reason why I say that she's very similar to Iris, I'll show you guys uh, in a second, but we have uh, four ice-based powers. So this is, this is why I think that she's a little bit like Iris. Her ultimate drops a little sphere at the back, and it moves its way towards your team. It does magic damage as it works its way through. And if you click the ultimate button again, after you cast it, it will stop. So you can you can drop it on Martha in the back, but if you're trying to target, say, Iris in the fourth position or, you know, Dante or something in the, in the second position, then you can click the ultimate button again and it will freeze. Huh. It'll stop the little ice cube thing uh, in the process of moving back. The comet moves towards Polaris, damaging nearby See, magic foes. damage. Hit the ultimate button again to hold the comet in place. This is similar to Nebula's ultimate, guys. Very similar to Nebula's ultimate. You can click Nebula's button again to explode her whatever, right? So you can assassinate specific heroes. Yep. She got a little bit of defense here. Okay, defense. This blocks three hits. It doesn't say if it blocks pure damage or magic damage or physical damage. It just says it blocks three hits. It goes to the front of the team. So I don't know if it blocks three hits on her or the next three attacks that attack the, the your team. And additionally, I don't know if it, if it focuses on abilities or if it also blocks basic attacks. So there's some question marks there. Sign of decline for Aurora. I mean, Iris is the sign of decline for Aurora. Polaris is just... I mean, Polaris wouldn't be good against Aurora. Aurora absorbs and reflects magic damage. I mean, it's better than, you know, a, a, a strictly physical attacking hero, sure, but... So this ability, it puts up this uh, this shield. So I think the people that hit, the people that attack during the shield are the ones that get slowed. And and Kira was just slowed with her basic attack. So obviously it factors into basic attacks also. This is a green ability. It <laughs> froze in the video. This is a green ability, so it pops on its own. You can't really control when, but it's going to be a huge chunk of damage reduction, you know, no matter what. For the whole team, uh, just stopping three damaging attacks. Another counter on for Kira. Eh, I mean, Kira, you could say, would probably be one of the counters for her because... It, you know, the, the more attacks that you get in, again, I don't know if it's instances of damage that is being dealt. I don't know if it's like a single, you know, a single event, like attack equals one, even though Dante throws four spears, that's one attack. So that blocks the entire thing. Like, I don't know how that works. You know what I mean? I'm not sure exactly how that works. We'll have to, we'll have to play with it whenever it goes live. Yeah. So she gains energy. She blocks damage and it slows the front line right? That are the attackers. The attackers that hit it are slowed, so they attack slower. She gains energy and it outright blocks some attacks. And then it freezes the front line. It freezes ice the front line in place. Nearby enemies. Oh no, it damages nearby enemies. Stealth shield breaks, shards of ice will damage nearby enemies. And you can see it's it's magic damage or is it physical damage? I I don't know. I don't know if it's... I'm assuming it's magic damage, but it could be physical damage. Right, which means it could be dodged. Summon Northern Lights. Blue ability. The ranks, which prolongs the duration of control effects. At Blue ability that envelops the enemy team and extends the duration of control effects. Okay, similar to the pet Mara that extends the duration of control effects on, you know, one hero. This will extend all control effects dealt in that time window, right? Additionally, affected foes are less likely to hit you with their skills. And somehow, there's a new effect, I guess. It says that the inflicted enemies of the Northern Lights are going to be less likely to hit you. Does that mean that they have a, a two-hit debuff? Are they blinded? Are they silenced? Like, is this, a, is this a new thing altogether? Like, how do you determine the hit percentage? Because hit percentage is... Hit percentage is not something that's factored into this game. 
like you have a percentage chance to land and attack, but if you are at max level, that percentage chance to land the attack is always 100%, right? If you go and you look at any control effect hero like uh, like Arachne, the jump triggers an explosive wave on hitting the target, sending nearby enemies for five seconds. These abilities, when you're not at max level, they, they have a chance to be resisted. And I don't know if it's because maybe I have, uh, let's see, if I turn off complete skill info, will it show it differently? I think it might. It doesn't, it doesn't say, it doesn't say, but these, these, uh, these abilities, their chance to hit that their chance to stun their chance to silence is based on the hero level. So if you're at max level, it's a 100% chance. Uh, it could be like a Mira missed hit when crit. So that's the thing, Gabriel, is it a, is it a 100% missed chance? Like, is it a guarantee they cannot hit you during this blue ability? Is it a guaranteed 100% avoidance while this ability is up? It can't possibly be that. It can't possibly be just for the, for the whole duration of this, nobody in the enemy team can hit you with any skills. Like it cannot be possible. That would just be too much. It's not based on level, Samuel. Oh, well, there you go. That was a bad example. Thank you. And it says less likely. So like Zisha's skill. Well, Zisha's skill is, you know what? Let me open that up and let me, let me just pull that up. Let me take a look at her. Let me take a look at the skill here. The Crimson Mist ability causing enemy basic attacks. So this is causing all basic attacks to miss. It doesn't, it, it doesn't create a chance for the attacks to miss. It's causing, it's a flat blanket, all basic attacks miss. All basic attacks miss. This is saying prolongs the duration of control effects. Additionally, affected foes are less likely to hit you with their skills. Affected foes are less likely to hit you with their skills. Like for the whole duration, it will be a percentage. Sala, I don't disagree with you there, but never before in Hero Wars has there been a percentage base like that. Never. There's critical hit chance, which they probably will just adopt it into that somehow. Like adopt the the uh, the main stat formula in there somehow. Kira still hit and uh, in silence, I agree. I feel like this is a really bad example, Poly T. I feel like this is a really poor example of the skill at action. So it's obvious that it's not a 100% avoidance. It's obvious. Does does Kira not do the Control damage, but she still silences? Affected foes are less likely Let's to see. Hit you with their skills. Additionally, affected foes are less likely to hit you. I mean, come on, guys. Like this is the worst. This is the worst example of this ability in action ever kira literally hits everybody and silences you guys hero wars come on <laughs> you guys could have done so much better here's an ability that you know blocks the enemy's chance to hit you and then show a clip of them hitting you with every hit and then <laughs> and then the debuff landing you with their skills and then they repeated the the they repeated northern lights again the blue ability but this is obviously supposed to be the violet ability that modifies things right uh, i think lars and crystal are only hit once there oh is that is that what it is glacial fortress or pulsing comet explodes the violet ability modifies her shield and her ultimate okay and whenever the abilities go off they freeze in place which i'm assuming is a stun a stun like thing but is it a new debuff is it counting as a uh, as a stun so this is really interesting and this is why the location of the ultimate going off matters because if you specifically want to freeze the back line, you can halt the ultimate in the back line. If you want the front line to be frozen, you let the you let the ultimate go all the way to the back and, and then all the way back up to the front line, and it will freeze the enemies. My video is stunned. <laughs> For a few seconds and blocks their energy gain. So it it shows them, right? That's the effect of them being frozen. And it says and stops their energy gain. So the question that I have is, is does this prevent them from doing attacks like any attack are they stunned frozen in place is it is it blocked by uh sebastian nebula and chorus and celeste can it be removed by that uh, or is it just the energy gain is it just that they cannot get additional energy while they're frozen right it freezes nearby enemies for a few seconds and blocks their energy gain it See, the way he words it, it, it could be enemy. it freezes enemy for a few seconds and blocks their energy gain and apparently the frozen enemies also have much lower magic defense. Uh, Calnap, it wouldn't affect Isaac at all. It wouldn't affect Isaac at all. But it depends on the wording. They do like they can't. They do, they do look like they can't move. Yeah, I don't. I think my um, they're not attacking. Foes are vulnerable to magic damage. See, they they have the stun. See, they have the stun animation above their head, so they must be stunned. Twins meta incoming. I mean, twins have always been good on offense. 
But the problem is, is they're so bad on defense that you you shouldn't level them. Okay, so there's two there's two magic penetration artifacts Gauze. there. All right, so her her uh, artifact weapon is magic penetration, guys. So she is she's gonna be probably mage control, mage control Celeste, maybe a better Jorgen, maybe. So she's got magic penetration for her um uh, for her artifact weapon, and we can see here, we can see here her uh, her red three items. So that's, uh, okay. Her red three items looks like, looks similar to Iris. Some of them are similar to Iris. Um, Morrigan, Hook, Sensor, very similar to Morrigan. Let's take a look here at, very similar to Celeste. She doesn't have piercing gaze though. She just has got the uh, she's got the um, creator of worlds, but she doesn't have the piercing gaze. Um, no piercing gaze. Maybe Leon. Very similar to Leon too. So, yeah, I don't know. It's hard to say. Probably um, probably mage control or control mage. If I had to guess. If I had to guess. And then of course at the very end of the video we get the announcements. Uh, the stranger from frigid space coming December twenty first. So December twenty first is. Uh, when the uh, Winterfest event is going to go live, presumably. That is Wednesday night slash Thursday morning. Wednesday night slash Thursday morning. Yeah.